Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to use Google Cloud Scheduler. Cloud Scheduler is a great way to, well, schedule things. So let's say, for example, that every Monday morning you need to send a report to your boss or import some data into your system. Well, if that can be triggered by an HTTP endpoint, you can use Cloud Scheduler to do that for you. Let's jump into Google Cloud Console and I'll show you how to set this up. The first thing you want to do is you want to always make sure you're in the right project. Then from there, you can go to your navigation menu and go to Cloud Scheduler. And if you don't have it in here, you can also come up here and search for it in here. Once you're in Cloud Scheduler, you can say Create Job. And this first screen is all about defining the schedule. So I'll give it a name, Send Boss Report. And then you choose the region where you want this to be executed from. So I'll leave mine as US Central 1. And then you choose the frequency. And this uses the cron format. And if you're not familiar with the cron format, it basically is a way to set a schedule that can happen at any time in the year down to the minute. And the format for cron is in five sections. The first section is the minute, which you can see it's saying right here, it needs to be a value of zero to 59. The next section is the hour, which is zero to 23. The third is the day, which is the day of the month, it needs to be between one and 31. The fourth section is which month it needs to be. And then finally is the day of the week. In this example here, I have five stars and a star is a wild card, which means every single one. And so this would run every single minute of every single day, all day, every day. That's not what we want. So in this example, let's say this needs to run at 6 a.m. on Monday mornings. For this first one, we want this to run at the top of the hour. So it's gonna be the minute of zero. And then the hour is going to be six, which is gonna be 6 a.m. And you can see down here that's starting to tell us exactly when this is gonna run. So this is a great way of double checking that you don't screw this up. And then the third one is the day. Since this is the day of the month, we're gonna leave it as a star because Mondays can fall on any day of the month. And then we also want this to run every single month of the year. And then finally, you can see it says, if you want to run this for a specific day, you wanna set that to one, which is going to be on every Monday. So you can see here, it's gonna say at 6 a.m. on Monday, we're going to run this. And then you wanna choose what the time zone is. And so you wanna make sure that this time zone is for your time zone so that it actually does run at six o'clock. And the way that you search for this is kind of weird in Google. You need to search by the country first. So I'll say United States, and then you search by the time zone. So I'm in mountain time. So I'll go ahead and choose Denver and then I'll hit continue. And now we can figure what to actually execute. And so there's a couple different things you can do. And like I said earlier, normally you would do an HTTP endpoint and you can also do things through PubSub, which is a Google service and through workflows. But in this example, I'll just choose HTTP and you wanna insert the URL. So I'm just gonna make up a URL here just for this. So it'll be yourdomain.com slash API slash email my boss. And you obviously wanna make sure that the URL that you're using here is correct and that you're using the right type of method. And then if you need to, you can add custom headers. And so if you have headers you need to add, so for example, authentication, you can add them here. So you add the name of the header and then the value. In this case, for this example, I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and then click continue. And then this last section is defining how it should retry if it fails. And basically what this is doing is it's telling it that if it fails, I want you to wait for a specific time before you try again and et cetera, et cetera. And I know that's really confusing, but I'll put a link to this page in the description down below. And this is the documentation page for the scheduler. And this explains what each one of those fields is in a little bit more detail. And then at the very bottom inside the max doubling section, it has an example of if you put in certain values, it'll tell you exactly how it would calculate all of those things. And I'll just let Google explain it because they'll do a way better job than I can. And then finally, you can hit create. And then once that's created, it will take you back to the scheduling page and it will list all the schedules that you have and their current status. And so here's the one we just created. And you can see here, it says the status and it has not run yet. Here's the frequency, the target. And what's really cool is it will show you if it has run when the last time it ran. And it'll also tell you when the next run is going to be. And this is really helpful if you fill out all of the stuff on the previous section and you come into here and you realize, oh crap, this isn't right. Then you can go back and change it. But the next run is gonna be on September 11th, which is a Monday at 6 a.m. So that means that this is working exactly how it should be. And one cool thing is if you hit the little menu right here on actions, you can actually force a run. So you can tell it to go run on demand if you need to. 
And of course, you can go view the logs so you can see the history of when this ran, if it was successful, you know, and things like that. One thing I almost forgot is pricing. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. There is a free tier for this. So you can see here that each Google billing account gets three jobs free for every month. When it says three jobs, that means that job that we set up is a single job. So even though that job may run every single minute of every single day, it's still only one job. So you get that for free. And you get three of those per billing account. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. That's not per project, that's per billing account. And even if you do have more than that, you can see that it's only 10 cents per job per month. So that's not much of a price. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you did like this video, I do put out a lot of content about Google Cloud. So please consider liking and subscribing and it helps me out quite a bit. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.